if your main goal is to learn sculpting for creative purposes, it is important to understand that it is challenging. It's always tough, especially if you've never tried sculpting before. I see dudes searching on the internet the easiest sculpting software. That's funny. Anything easy is cheap. I bet you don't want any cheap works, right? It's going to be sad to hear you give up sculpting because the software is not friendly or easy to use. What are you talking about, dude? Sculpting requires a combination of eye-brain-hand coordination skills, which are not necessarily related to a specific software. Doesn't matter if it's ZBrush or 3D code. If you want to learn sculpting, it will require a significant investment of time and effort, and it's important to have a clear understanding of your goals and skills required to achieve them. Never misplace improving your artistic skills into learning the software, else you would end up learning all the softwares in this world and never master any of them. This is the secret. The more you focus on mastering your skills, the more your chances of mastering a software increases. A guy I know once tried sculpting a crocodile and he ended up sculpting a baby lizard. I said to him, you see what you did by there? You are so focused on the software than growing your artistry. Let's talk about the top 5 free sculpting softwares in the world. Without wasting any more time, let's I've really taken time to break down what 3D Code is in most of my videos, so I'm not going to repeat that in this video. 3D Code has been in existence for a very long time, but I still ask myself how come nobody still knows of it. The software gained popularity due to its 3D projection painting, Brutopology and UV2. It was considered the 3D equivalent of Photoshop during its peak. As time passed, the software expanded its functionality but faced competition from other specialized apps that offered similar tools. 3D Code takes on a different I would say a unique approach and this unique approach is what has caused the software's growth. Most people see it and go, mm, this is weird and they back out without wanting to try it. Now, did you know 3D code can complement every software without any shortcomings or stress? Yes, from ZBrush to Blender, Maya Max, you name it, it fits perfectly. In the performance department, I would give it to ZBrush because ZBrush is still keen these days. However, to say that 3D code performs at a high level will be an understatement. You can readily sculpt models in that 250 million plus poly range without having to mortgage your home for a supercomputer like Blender would make you do. And let's face it, 250 million plus poly is more than enough for most projects and far beyond what you would ever use in game projects, right? 3D Code also benefits from having broader categorical diversity of features under the hood and is perfect complement to Blender and ZBrush. UV mapping and texture painting in ZBrush and Blender will be very basic if you begin to use 3D Code. Its feature sets for these two tasks are super powerful, but ZBrush wins if we are to compare it with 3D Code in a pure sculpting category. 3D Code offers other several useful options such as Retopology, which is considered miles ahead of ZBrush. The texture painting in 3D Code is also at a high level, comparable to Substance Painter. Its features are many and dope, you should visit their website and then read more about it. I constantly keep discouraging already Blender and ZBrush users not to quit and jump onto 3D code entirely, but rather complement those two with 3D code. That's the best decision you would ever take as a digital sculptor. The only real downside to using 3D code according to some users is instability, but I don't keep this reason in my books because it's super stable for others as well. So we can't conclude on this to be a general issue in using 3D code. Aside this, I'm very careful suggesting 3D code to everybody in many situations. Number one reason will be that 3D code can function as a credible substitute for both ZBrush and Substance Painter, especially if you work freelance or someone already working within a small or developing studio. One thing to keep in mind is 3D code is not an industry standard. What this means is that it may not carry as much weight when searching for a job. That's why I always use the term complement. But if you are planning on working in a bigger studio someday and you choose to go with only 3D code, you might be disappointed in the end. Only make it a complement and you will secure a job real quick. It's worth mentioning that ZBrush now offers subscription-based licenses as well as perpetual licenses, which will cost more than 3D code but will not require any additional fees unless you choose to 
upgrade to the next paid version. In conclusion, 3D Quote is a great software. You can search it up, try to see if you would flow well with it, and yeah, develop your skills beyond the skies because the sky is not the limit. The software Madbox was developed by the company Sky Meta during the production of the Lord of the Rings trilogy to enhance their creativity. It was first used as a first full product on King Kong 2005. The first version of the software was released to the public in February 2007, just before Sky Meta was acquired by Autodesk in August of the same year. Today, Madbox is widely respected in the industry and is used by companies such as Epic Games and Blair Studios. Such a beautiful introduction I took time to give Madbox. I'm working on a Madbox vs ZBrush video where I'm able to draw out more info because I was just struggling to fix Madbox into this video and I didn't want it to be me just listing out its features. That would have been boring, so I would only speak on just the surface of Madbox and give you an up close overview in the versus zbrush video hey madbox 2022 update was killer it came with one feature and one fix how awesome could that be right i overheard one guy say madbox is as good as dead while many may think so i disagree with that it's still being widely used it's not better than zbrush and it's not a bad program as well do you know which group of people i would recommend madbox to artists who have their entire body dipped into Autodesk products. Madbox is great for these groups of people. Now this is what I think. The reason why Madbox hasn't received an update in a long while is because anything Madbox is missing can be found in either Maya or 3D's Max. And it's functioning and receiving updates frequently in those apps. You want to use Madbox to its full potential, get Maya. That's just my opinion but I think that's the main secret behind using Madbox. Aside that, you can actually use Madbox without any of Autodesk products and still be okay. The thing is, your needs will grow as you develop your skills and that's where you might begin to find Madbox as not too useful. A lot of Madbox users jump on the ZBrush after a while, so yeah, you should watch out. Madbox in general has a short learning curve and a user-friendly interface similar to that of Photoshop or GIMP. It features sculpting layers that can be erased and masked and can handle a high number of polygons depending on your hardware. It also offers posing tools, tangent mirror mode while sculpting, real-time renderer and shadows, AO, DOF and PTX support. Additionally, it has curve guides for the brush and is slowly being killed by Autodesk, a well-funded company who has failed to provide a cutting-edge update ever since Buddhism was founded. Now, let me take you through what Madbox 2023 came with. The update introduces support for Rocky Linux and a new Linux installer. The release note of Madbox 2023 read in their entirety. Welcome to Madbox 2023. This release includes minor updates, including a new installer on Linux. This makes Madbox 2023 the second update in a row for which the only change listed is a new installer. The previous two updates only managed one listed new feature, a send to flame option in the case of Madbox 2020 and an automatic interface scaling in the case of Madbox 2019. However, the cost of an annual Madbox subscription continues to rise, increasing by $10 in 2021 and a further $5 this year. Now, my main problem is why would Autodesk buy Madbox if they won't continue it? I spent 44 billion years thinking about this and well, the answer might be exactly what I said in the beginning and that is 3D's Max and Maya holding on to whatever that Madbox is missing. The good side is maybe we might have a huge update to Madbox 2024 and the reason could be simple, Maxin. Maxin has managed to assemble a great army of softwares over the years and will seriously become a threat to Autodesk in the 3D department if Autodesk does not step up their game. At this point, I think I would have to go with what Steve Theodore said. Madbox is easy to pick up, will do the job as long as it's mostly painting displacement for a 3D's Max or Maya character or model. If you want a real sculpting program, you have to look somewhere else. I like what you said, but do you know what I think about this? Steve Theodore is Madbox phobic. ZBrush Core is a less feature rich version of the full version of ZBrush. 
I would say yes. It has all the key features that you would find within ZBrush's sculpting section, but you don't get the more advanced features. You can use ZBrush Core for personal and commercial purposes with no limitations. Now, for those of you who are planning on getting ZBrush Core, kindly take notice of this. One is going to be file type import and export. You cannot import or export FBX files. FBX has become a fairly standard file type, though troublesome. If you want to import an FBX file into ZBrush Core, you have to first of all send it into another program. Example will be Blender. Convert it into something like an OBJ and then import it into ZBrush Core. Now, the problem here is FBX files have the capacity to hold additional information such as camera setups and animation breaks. And for you to convert your project into an OBJ file simply because ZBrush Core cannot open FBX files means you would lose this information if you happen to have them in your project after the conversion is done. And for ZBrush Core not to have the ability to do this type of export opens up a whole new range of problems. There is also a problem with the number of brushes you get with ZBrush Core and it's one of the main difference between ZBrush and ZBrush Core. ZBrush Core only holds 36 brushes whereas the full version of ZBrush has 300 plus brushes. But the thing is, the available 36 brushes you get with ZBrush Core might be all you really need as a freelancer, let's be honest. If I'm to critically examine the type of brushes available within the core version of ZBrush, I would say it would work great if you are planning on doing organic modeling. There is also a problem with the number of polys. Unfortunately, you don't get Z remesher within ZBrush Core. Z remesher is an automatic retopology tool that ZBrush has created. It does a reasonable job at retopologizing your model. Great, but still falls behind 3D code retopo and everybody knows this. This tool might not be too much of a need, but it's very useful. Some people might consider retopologizing in ZBrush through Dynamesh or Decimation Master, but the output of these does not match ZBrush's result. Either way, I think this wasn't something ZBrush should have taken out of ZBrush Core. My next problem is going to be UV mapping. There is no ability to UV map in ZBrush Core. This is not something that I would even fight for because UV mapping within the complete ZBrush itself is uh, very much problematic. It's quite messy. Also, its controls are very limited, but you would find it very useful if you are prototyping, looking to get a quick render, or someone who isn't too concerned about their final UVs. If you want to use ZBrush Core at all costs, then you should make arrangements on getting another software for UV mapping. You know which software does this best? 3D code. I wouldn't mention Blender because it's also got some quirks with its UV mapping, which hasn't been fixed yet. Overall, there is a lot missing in ZBrush Core when compared to the full version of ZBrush and other sculpting tools that falls within its price range. Aside these problems and a few others, ZBrush Core is a great sculpting tool for people who want to get into organic modeling. You should try it and if it suits your needs, give it a shot, especially if your main target is to use the main ZBrush. Other than that, kindly consider another option. 3D Coat or Blender would be a great option to look into since it's able to perform all the lacking features of ZBrush Core and falls within similar price range, with Blender even being free. As of June 10, 2020, support for Sculptures was discontinued after the software failed to receive an update for almost a decade. Pixelogic released ZBrush Core Mini. Core Mini is a free version to ZBrush itself and ZBrush Core. ZBrush Core Mini includes Sculptures Pro. This is a ground up redesign of Sculptures, but this time ZBrush does not use the original Sculptures code. Rather, it's completely an original code that replicates how Sculptures functions whilst also adding better performance and new capabilities. Just like Sculptures, Pizologic is making ZBrush Core Mini free for everyone to use. If you wish to continue using Sculptures, you may certainly do so. However, it will no longer be available for download and Pixelogic is also not providing technical support for it any longer. Okay, let's talk about Core Mini. ZBrush Core Mini is a simplified version of ZBrush Core. 
another step down of zbrush core so now you know what you are getting into right it includes a limited feature set compared to the full version of zbrush as well as a lack of support for certain file formats and plugins additionally because it is a simplified version of the software it may not be suitable for professionals or advanced users who require more advanced tools and capabilities Core Mini is a complete basic sculpting tool and for this reason I would only encourage people who have plans of using the main ZBrush to play around with Core Mini so as to have a fair knowledge on what or how ZBrush works. Okay so I left out Blender because I have spoken a lot on Blender on this channel and also made the effort of comparing it to almost all the big sculpting tools on the market. Also I think I did a very good job at comparing it with almost all the softwares I made mention of in this particular video. Yeah, so that's Blender. If you love this video, kindly don't forget to subscribe, like, share. Until my next video, peace out.